We're happy to welcome in Rob Schultz, who is the CEO of the Northern Ohio Golf Association, an allied, an allied golf association with the USGA. NOGA encompasses 175 member clubs with over 27,000 golfing members. Rob, welcome to Back Nine Report. Hey, thanks for having me. That's 27,000 members, 175 clubs. That's a lot of tournaments and handicaps to keep track of. Uh, yeah, it is. But uh, the USGA helps us uh, with their system to, to be able to do that. And uh, we've got a young lady downstairs who is uh, the best in the business at doing it, Lindsay Butler. So we're, uh, we're in good hands. Let's uh, kind of dive right, right in here. Uh, 2020 has been such a difficult year. First, golf has courses it? were shut down in Ohio for six weeks. Then golfers returned in mass. We've seen record numbers visiting golf courses across the state. This had to be one of the most difficult years that you have ever seen. And, and how did you handle all of this? It's not even close. It, uh, to say it was the most difficult is, is an easy statement to make. Um, at the beginning, boy, I mean, at the beginning, we, you know, I, I, I had no idea how to handle something like this. And, and so what was really great at the beginning was a lot of different people coming together. My, my officers in the organization, and we were having daily Zoom calls, and actually there were conference calls at that point. Um, and then, then we learned about Zoom, and they became Zoom calls, which became much more engaging. Um, but a ton of communication at the beginning, and I'm really proud to say that um, many of the, or, oh, almost all of the uh, uh, allied associations in Ohio were, were getting together and talking as well, um, and, and kind of leading the effort as to how's golf going to work, you know, and for a time it was, we couldn't do it, and then we kind of worked and got it back in and, and kind of made some common sense uh, points to the state of Ohio and said, well, why can't we do this? If you can't social distance on a, on a 400 yard hole, where can you social distance? Um, so a couple of the provisions of not touching the flag stick and no bunker rakes. And the next thing you know, uh, golf was back. And, and like you said, everywhere that we went this year, uh, with a, with a Noga, uh, tournament, you, you would ask them, how's, how are things going? And, and they were just saying, you know, it's just off the chart. So, um, now we got to figure out a way to keep all those people. And so we get them back, you know, in the, in the coming years. You know, you touched on it briefly, uh, but I have been so impressed with every golf course, every golf industry person that I talk to, to the great lengths that have been taken to ensure every golfer's safety and so that they can still have an enjoyable round but feel safe on the golf course. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. I, uh, we had a young lady here who was an intern this year, and she asked me to fill out a questionnaire when she went back to school. Um, about how we dealt with this whole year and, and to think back at the beginning of things that we were doing it really got got me to kind of look back and say what were we doing in March and what were we doing in April and, and what hoops were we jumping through um, when you do it you don't get, think about it it just has to be done right yeah yeah exactly right but now all of a sudden we're coming in and we're saying you know hey you can't touch that golf cart because I haven't sanitized it yet and we can only have one person in a golf cart and then that eventually evolved to having two people in a golf cart and you know as some clubs are putting screens or plastic between the two riders on a golf cart um things that you know if you would have said to somebody you know a year ago this is what's 21 or 2020 is going to look like they'd have told you you were off your rocker so you know to, to have to go through those things um was a challenge there's no question about it but i am so proud of what the golfing community did to keep golf going, but also to, you know, those numbers that are coming out in the golf world and those booming numbers of people coming back, they obviously feel safe coming to play golf. And I'm proud of our industry for making them feel that way. And then obviously, hopefully we're going to see some benefits for, of that going forward. That's one of the points that I've been stressing uh, for the last couple of months. Uh, golf has been a leader in this whole thing of getting people out and doing something, not just locked away in their house. I, I'm so proud and so impressed with the industry as a whole and being a leader in this whole thing, not only the PGA Tour or the LPGA, but just even at the grassroots, every local club and, and everybody that's involved. It's, it's been wonderful. Uh, another topic here, uh, now that we're a year or more into the new US, USGA configuration that has brought uh, 
USGA handicaps into the digital age. How has the Allied Golf Association with the USGA benefited NOGA and Ohio golfers in general? Well, no, the USGA has always been a terrific partner for all the AGAs that it's been involved with. I mean, it's, um, you know, honestly, the, the main revenue sources that, that come to any AGA are through the handicapping system of the USGA. And for us to be able to um, be the, the go-between between the USGA and, and our golfers here in Ohio, um, it's, it's truly, it's truly uh, an honor to be able to do it. And then we also be able, we're able to touch those golfers maybe in a different way um, with the things that we offer as an association at the grassroots level. So the inroads of the AGA agreement um, kind of opened some doors for us initially with the handicapping and things that people are going to really, really want from the USGA. And that from that point forward, you know, we offer a NOGA membership. Um, you know, the other golf associations across the country offer a membership to their association. And there's member benefits that go along with that, playing in tournaments, uh, you know, golf course rating for the facilities, um, you know, rules of golf, seminars like that. You know, World Handicap System came out at the beginning of this year, and we did many seminars for that at the beginning of the year. And we had a terrific response of, you know, a ballroom at Weymouth Country Club full of people that are there to, to hear about what's going on. And, and then, again, going back to the USGA, they brought actually had the, a young man come in and do a presentation that day for it. So the partnership with them really is a benefit to all AGAs. It really helps us get their message across. But again, it also helps us to engage an audience on a local level, then we can provide services to them as well. Since you mentioned the new World Handicap System, um, you know, there was a lot of gnashing of teeth and shaking of heads uh, when we were, you know, learned we're gonna have a new handicap system. Uh, we're into that now over a year. Um, what's your feeling on that? It, it seems like everybody now has accepted it. Uh, some, in some cases, handicaps lowered. Some cases, handicaps raised a little bit. Still a little bit confusing, but it seems like everybody's accepted it, and it's uh, just going on where, right from where it left off. Yeah, I agree with you. It's funny because at the beginning of the year, um, you know, when this all started, even rolling into, I guess, last fall, everybody was, was starting to talk about well, how is this going to work? And I'm not comfortable with this. And, um, and we, were, we were good about listening to everybody's concerns. But at some point, I really started to say to guys, and, and I'm a PGA member, so I'm talking to a lot of the PGA head golf professionals about what's going to happen. And I finally just said, let's just have it, let, let's just get started with it. And let's see, because there were a lot of concerns and um, whether those concerns were going to be um, realized or not, I think was we were waiting to see. And at the end of the day, I did not hear a whole lot about WHS this year. And no news is good news, I think. You know, we did check in. There was a survey that was put out by the USGA to all the facilities asking them how did things go and, and what were the touch points that the guys didn't like. Um, yeah, some of it was. Nobody wants to see their handicap go down for some reason. You know what, you know what I mean. But uh but, it, but incrementally, it went down for everybody, you know. So if a guy dropped a shot, you know, his buddy that he plays with probably dropped a shot. So it all kind of evened out in, in the wash. Um, but I think the new system is showing people that um, it's doing a better job of monitoring, monitoring handicaps and making it more fair. Um, you know, the soft caps, the hard caps, those kind of things that are in place are, are things that are going to help that uh, – uh, we'll use the word sandbagger from from putting scores in that he maybe shouldn't or moving up too quickly with a handicap. And I think those provisions have really helped. So we shall we'll see as it goes forward. But this year, I think was was very positive with WHS. You touched on it a minute ago too that you uh, organize and host and run a lot of tournaments uh, with twenty seven thousand members, one hundred seventy five clubs. That's a lot of tournaments. Give us some of the highlights and some of the bigger tournaments that you uh, you help run and things that are available to guys if they want to get in, maybe start playing some tournament golf, guys that haven't been. So, so many people have come back to the game. Maybe they're ready now to, to put their game on display and start playing a little bit. Yeah, well, we've uh, – the NEOA, the Northeast Ohio Amateur, is, is obviously our, our, uh, our number one major event that we run each year. And we've been the last two years at Windmill Lakes with Herb Page down there. Um, and it's been great. We've kind of found a home there. Um, and uh, – the, the tournament is growing 
And that's, that's what we've been trying to do. At, when I came in five years ago, the tournament was really kind of fledgling and, 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 and not doing well, and, and we have brought it back. Now, on the NOGA level of, of, of tournaments, um, we developed a scratch series, which is going to be a pure tournament series for guys that are used to playing in tournaments. And then we created a flighted series, which is going to be more of a relaxed atmosphere. Um, so the, uh, if you guys want to get involved next year, and, and this scratch series that came out really took off this year. Um, guys, I think from the Akron, Akron area, even east and west, have realized that there's a level of competition here that is really terrific. And it gives them something, you know, competitive to play in up in this area. Just about, you know, every week or every two weeks, there's an event on the Scratch Series. So get guys involved with that. And then the guys that want to just come out and, and play golf, um, you know, it is a competition, but it's not as serious a competition. Still, all the rules are in effect and all that. So I don't want to make it sound like we're, 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 we're kind of just pushing you out there and saying, go, go play. And, and if you hold your ball, great. If you don't, you don't. No, it's a tournament. But it's just a, it's gets got a little bit of a different feel, and, though, and because of that, that field is flighted. So you're able to play within a flight that that keeps your handicap somewhat close to the guys around you in that flight, and you can be competitive. So it's it's been a terrific, terrific uh, rollout of that this year that we did it. Um, and again, we have a TPAC committee, a tournament player advisory committee, that helps us with all these kind of decisions. And what we're doing is we're listening to the golfers in this area and saying. You know, this is your tournament series. What do you want? You know, Rob Schulze is not going to tell you what you want. I want to hear what you want. So, and that has been tremendously successful. Um, just getting the pulse of what guys want. We can't do everything. But, um, but in general, I would say that this whole series and tournament schedule now is because of the players in Northeast Ohio. And if you want to play any of these tournaments, all you have to really do is join NOGA, Northern Ohio Golf Association. Right. And that means just go to your local golf course, country club. Um, you can even get it online at uh, Northeast Ohio Golf. So N-E-O-H golf dot com. Uh, you can get uh, uh, you can join their their club there. Um, but you do have to have a gin handicap. So go get that gin handicap and then the member benefits follow after that. And that includes playing in tournaments. Rob, uh North uh, Noga undertook uh, several years ago uh, a golf course that you uh, dedicate to helping physically impaired or um, those kind of things. Uh, golfers bring them out, even though they have maybe have some physical disadvantages. You help with them with that. You call that the turn. Can you talk a little bit about that for us? Yeah, this is probably uh, you know we're very proud of a lot of things we're doing here, but the turn um, started uh, as an uh, an organization about 20 years ago um, to come in and really use golf to help people that were stroke survivors, traumatic brain injuries. Um, we, we have veterans that are coming and using the program, uh, spinal cord injuries, anybody that has an, a, a debilitation like that. Um, but what we are is we're kind of the what's next. After you go through the hospital and then you go through physical therapy and you're done with that, we're that what's next. So what, Guys and, and, and ladies can come over here, and what we're doing is uh, we're using golf to kind of get you back into life. And there's a big physical component to it. We do physical fitness, recreational physical fitness as well. And, and then the golf swing kind of mirrors what they're doing on the fitness side of things. So if they're working on balance and fitness, we're doing a lot of balance things on the golf side of things. Um, but the social aspect of what's going on in that program is equally as important as the physical and getting people to get out of their house. And believe me, this year we learned more than ever about the um, benefits of getting out of the house and how people want to get out of the house. And we've had the program going since June 15th and uh, people are coming, you know, if they optioned in and wanted to come back and, and be in part of the program at the turn, um, they have come back and they've come back in droves because this has become part of their life. And I'm very, very proud of that. Probably the one thing that we really realized this year from the turn is how important this program is to the people that are involved in it. I think it's fantastic. I followed uh, that program for several years now, became aware of it uh, a long time ago. And you guys do a great job with that and uh, to be commended uh, wholeheartedly for, for your efforts there. Um, Rob, uh, let's uh, move on here. Um, 2021 is coming up real quick. 
uh, something new that's going to happen. Uh, you actually merged with the Toledo Golf District. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. How did that uh, come about? How did it happen? And what are some of the benefits for Northern Ohio golfers in that? Yeah, so, um, you know, this has been a, it's been a, it's been, I would say, a long time coming. It, we've been kind of talking about something like this over the last three or four years and really um, started on the side of a fairway at, at, a, at an event where we had a gentleman who uh, was the executive director in Toledo came over and was helping us doing, do some rules officiating. And he and I um, found each other on the golf course and we were chatting for a while. And, and uh, the next thing we knew, we started kind of talking about the what ifs and uh, uh, Toledo didn't have, uh, didn't really have a succession plan moving forward uh, with their, with their uh, management team. And we're a young organization here, and we just kind of started working together a lot with the rules. Um, it was a it was a, a a thing that we needed to learn about, uh, and they had great knowledge over there. And a lot of uh, they just they have a lot of uh, a wisdom over there. They've been you know going and doing this for a long time, and so that was a huge benefit to us to to have them kind of help us along. Um, but then uh, we're a bigger association with them, so we have a lot of assets that they don't have. Um, and so the two coming together really is, uh, I keep saying it's like peas and carrots. It's just a perfect fit. Um, there's a lot of respect. There's a lot of trust that went into this. Um, I'm very, very proud of that fact that, that you know, an association trusted us and trusted me to say, listen, we're, we'd like you to be the caretaker of things going forward. Um, and all of that trust and, and honesty is going to benefit all golfers across northern Ohio now. We keep, we're always saying northeast Ohio with where we are in Cleveland, but now it's going to be all of northern Ohio. And there's certainly some great golf courses in the Toledo area that we're looking forward to having some events at. And I know the Toledo people are, are equally as excited to come this way and be able to play the Canton Brooksides and Canterbury's. And, and uh, I don't want to leave. I'm going to leave some clubs out because we have so many great facilities in our area here that we're very spoiled, but uh, they know that and they're looking forward to come over and being part of that as well. So we're, we're looking to welcome them over. Yeah. I, I see only good things for that. Uh, I, I uh, it, it's always been a question of why is there so many individual mm -hmm. uh, golf districts, USGA golf districts in the state of Ohio. And I, I think that's a wonderful thing uh, to, to see happen. Um, did I read that Noga has partnered with uh, Indoor Simulator Concern and will be hosting a winter golf series in, in Cleveland and Catton and Akron? You have heard correctly. Yes, 1899 Golf. And a good friend of mine who is a part uh, owner there, Scott Pollock, who's a PGA member, uh, has been a uh, founder of this business. And uh, he is uh, he reached out to us and said, hey, is there something that we could do? And we sat down with them and, and said, well, you know, let's start it as an advertisement. And then it kind of got into, well, what if we, what if we actually did something here throughout the winter time? And uh, you sign up for an event and, and essentially you have 30 days to play that event. So you can kind of come in on your own time, play the event. Um, you're obviously the conditions stay the same for that entire 30 days because you're inside and the, the uh, golf course is set up the same way for everybody, uh, no matter when you play in those 30 days. So it's just an exciting thing. I mean, we'll see how it goes. Um, but, you know, these kind of ideas um, are really what have made NOGA um, so different than it had been in the past. And embracing these kind of ideas and looking at some new ways to engage golfers. And hopefully we get some golfers that maybe haven't played a NOGA event coming to do that this winter. And that'll translate over into playing in some of those tournaments in 21. Rob, are there anything else, any other new things coming down the pike for 2021 that uh, you want to make us aware of? I would just say that uh, I know we're going to do a lot more uh, on the advertising front. So, you know, companies that are looking to, you keep, you're mentioning the 27,000 um, golfers that we have uh, in our association. You know, those, those people, those, uh, those golfers are obviously customers out there in the, uh, in the uh, uh, Northern Ohio world. And we're looking to start to do that kind of a thing to where we can bring some value to our members again, but also to help with uh, some of the local businesses around here as well and do some advertising for them. What we're looking for is a win-win opportunity, a win for our NOGA members and a win for the companies. So that is something that we're looking at that we haven't really done a whole lot of. So that's a, a place where we're gonna grow this next year. 
been chatting with Rob Schultz from the uh, executive, who is the chief executive officer of the Northern Ohio Golf Association. If you would like to learn more about NOGA or become involved, simply visit uh, NOGA.org, NOGA.org. Rob, thanks so much for taking a few minutes and talking about it, talking with us today and uh, talking about golf in Northern Ohio.